Good evening and welcome to the Channel Studios here in London with your international news around the world in five. Former US President Barack Obama has been given a hero's welcome at COP26 as he delivered a keynote speech saying island nations are threatened now more than ever. The former president, who was born in the island nation of Hawaii, said the most vulnerable to changing climate were often not those causing the climate crisis. As the world's second largest emitter of greenhouse gases, the U.S. has to lead. We have enormous responsibilities. It's day eight of the COP26 summit. Poorer nations argue they need to be given $100 billion in annual climate finance that has long been promised. Early results from the Nicaraguan general election suggest that incumbent President Daniel Ortega has won by a landslide. With about half of the ballots counted, Mr Ortega has secured around 75% of the vote. But what was meant to look like spontaneous applause here, his critics say is all for show. His main rival, Cristina Camorro, is under house arrest for allegedly money laundering and seven more presidential hopefuls were also detained. The US and EU have signalled likely further diplomatic isolation and sanctions if Daniel Ortega does indeed win for a fourth consecutive time. Heavy rains and thunderstorms have caused severe flooding in the southern Indian city of Chennai. No deaths have been reported, but officials in the state of Tamil Nadu, of which Chennai is the capital, have issued warnings to evacuate people from low-lying areas. Local media footage showed uprooted trees and cars submerged as water quickly rose to block roads. This is the heaviest rainfall in the city since 2015. The West African regional bloc ECOWAS has imposed sanctions against Mali's transitional leaders and their families, which range from travel bans to a freeze of their financial assets. It follows their failure to adhere to the timetable of returning the country to constitutional rule by February next year. ECOWAS said that the Malian authorities had informed them of their inability to meet the transition deadline of holding elections. ECOWAS will be considering further sanctions next month if there's still no progress. An Italian judge has convicted 70 defendants in the first sentence of one of the largest ever trial against mafia celebrated in the country. The case targets the Drangheta clan, which is based in Calabria, and is considered by prosecutors to be the most powerful mafia group in the country. Suspects face an array of charges, including extortion, drug trafficking and theft. The fast-track trial, which allows those convicted to have their sentences reduced by a third, involved 91 defendants. British Airways and Virgin Atlantic have marked the opening of U.S. borders to foreign visitors by taking off from Heathrow in Tamden. In a show of solidarity, flying west with planes fully loaded with passengers, they set aside their long-running rivalry and took to the skies just after 8.50 a.m., more than 600 days since the U.S. travel ban was introduced. Bosses of the two airlines described it as a pivotal moment for the industry. The ban was imposed by former President Donald Trump, affecting non-U.S. citizens from over 30 countries. Under the new rules, foreign travelers will need to show proof of vaccination before flying, get a negative COVID-19 test result within three days of traveling, and hand over their contact information. Voters in a Twitter poll have urged Elon Musk to sell 10% of his stake in Tesla in order to pay tax. The billionaire wrote, much is made lately of unrealized gains being a means of tax avoidance, so I propose selling 10% of my Tesla stock. Do you support this? Almost 58% of the 3.5 million respondents voted yes. The vote could see him dispose of nearly $21 billion of stock in the electric car maker. He has yet to comment publicly on the verdict or how and when he would sell his stake. And finally, the dress worn by Amy Winehouse during her final stage performance has been sold for more than $243,000, 16 times over the auction estimate. The singer-songwriter wore the halter mini dress in Belgrade in June 2011, a month before her death aged 27. More than $4 million was raised from about 800 items. She died from alcohol poisoning at her home in Camden in 2011. All proceeds are going towards the foundation her parents set up to help young people with addiction issues. And that's your international news around the world in five. Now back to the Channel Studios in Lagos.